Natalie here. Today we're making a pecan chocolate bourbon pie that will not only outshine its glutinous cousin, but will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. Here are the ingredients which makes this pie so addictive. Bourbon, certainly neat. I mean, there's no other way to drink it. Toasted pecans. And last but not least, the dark chocolate. And you can have it all in one pie. Let's get started on the recipe. I'm going to use today some defrosted pie dough. I made that a while back, wrapped it up and froze it, and now defrosted it yesterday in the fridge to have it cold and ready to go this morning. If you want to learn how to make pie dough, check out my pumpkin pie video. You want to start with making the pie crust. So you want to tear off two pieces of parchment paper and roll out the dough. Sprinkle some of the millet flour on the top of the parchment paper to avoid the dough from sticking to it. Place the defrosted dough onto the parchment paper. Cover it with the second sheet of parchment paper and roll out the dough between both of the parchment papers. Roll it out evenly until it is about a quarter inch thick. You may want to roll over the dough once or twice to make sure it's nice and even. Remove the top parchment paper. Now sprinkle some more millet flour on the top of the dough. Carefully roll the dough with the parchment paper onto the rolling pin. And if you want to look really professional, then you roll the dough into the pie pan with the rolling pin. Well, it's not looking too professional since I'm mixing some dough here. So I'm going to just add some more dough from the leftovers. And uh, in this case, I have to roll out some dough and just add some more to it to make sure I have a nice thick edge for the pecan pie. I like to have more crust on the pie edge. So I'm going to add some extra dough to it. I'm going to trim the edge of the pie with a paring knife or with a cake spatula. And then I start crimming the edges of the pie. Crimming the pie edge is an art form in itself, so don't worry if you don't master it. You want to cut a circle out of parchment paper which is a little bit bigger than the bottom of the pie. For any types of beans on the top of the parchment paper as pie weights. Add a pie shield to protect the pie edge from browning too much. I'm showing you in the video Pie Essentials how you can make your own cheap pie shield out of aluminum foil. Pre-bake the pie crust for about 20 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Place the pecans on a baking sheet. You will put them into the oven after the pie crust is done. Take the pie crust out of the oven. Increase the temperature to 350 and place the pecans into the oven for 10 minutes to slightly toast them. The pecans are ready when the kitchen smells like roasted pecans. You want to check them and see that some of the pecans have browned or have turned a little bit darker. You want to pick the pecan halves which have not been damaged because you will need them later for decoration and put those aside. Measure that you have 225 grams or two cups of the toasted broken pecan halves. And if you don't have enough, use some of the whole pecan halves. You will need crushed pecans for the filling. There are at least four ways how you can crush pecans. The first one is with a food processor. The second one is with a mortar and pestle. And then there's the low budget type. Put some of the pecans into a Ziploc or food-grade plastic bag. Make sure you leave some space for the air to escape and then use a hammer and smash them. An alternative is, in case you're not in possession of a hammer or a mallet, you can still use your wine bottle from the previous night. After you crush the pecans in one or the other way, pour them into a mixing bowl. Add about 1 cup or 140 grams of bittersweet chocolate. I prefer to use chocolate chips, but on times you can't find them gluten-free. Then you will have to cut your own chocolate chunks out of a chocolate bar. And I'm going to quickly show you how you do that. Add 170 gram or 3 quarter cup of light brown sugar. 
Add 120 grams or half a cup of white sugar. Maple syrup. No, not Aunt Jemima, real maple syrup. 120 milliliters or half a cup of maple syrup. You may want to use one to two tablespoons of bourbon for a less boozy pecan pie. Make sure you use certainly celiac friendly bourbon. I personally like to use 60 milliliters or a quarter cup of bourbon, which makes it nice and boozy. And add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, a pinch of salt or half a teaspoon of salt, and add three eggs. Mix the ingredients well together with a spatula and pour the filling into the pre-baked pie shell. Now decorate the pie with the preserved pecan halves. You want to lay them out in a circular fashion and just continue until the entire pie is covered. I normally lay out the larger pecan halves towards the edge of the pie and then use the smaller pecan halves in the center of the pie. When you're done decorating the pie, make sure to put back on the pie shield before you put the pie back into the oven. Bake the pie for another 50 minutes to an hour with the pie shield on. You know the pecan pie is done when it's not wobbly anymore. Let it rest overnight or for a few hours before serving. Enjoy! Thank you for watching my obsession with making gluten-free deliciousness. If you liked the recipe today, please make sure to like and share it and subscribe to my channel. Make sure to select the bell that you get notifications about any upcoming recipes.